let's wait for the recording to start, then we'll pray and get started with the class today. I think the others will join us soon. Okay. The recording is taking a minute or two to get started. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and pray and uh, we will get started. Could uh, somebody please lead us uh, in prayer together and we will start. I'm sure the others will join us. Anyone could lead us in prayer, please. Loving Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence. So Father God, thank you for this wonderful, blessed day, oh Father God. Thank you for adding on in our lives, oh Lord Jesus. Um, thank you for your mercy and grace upon our lives, oh Lord. As we gather here uh, for the session, uh, help us to listen and grasp what has what been taught of Father God. Uh, thank you, Father God. We submit the entire session into your hands, of Father God. In Jesus' matchless name, I pray this prayer, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So last week, so in this course on church and uh, ministry administration, uh, we're just talking about all the uh, various aspects of uh, uh, the church as an organization. Uh, and many people... Uh, tend not to look at the church as an organization. They only look at it as a spiritual being or a spiritual expression, which is important, which is true. Um, but uh, uh, we must be very aware that the church or any uh, church and Christian ministry is an organization and has to be run as uh, an organization and therefore needs you know good sound administration so we've been you know going through various aspects of uh, the church and ministry administration last week we dealt with an important area we talked about uh, human resources and we dealt mainly with the staff how do you take care of the staff which are uh, uh, people who are paid by the church. But part of the human resources, especially in a local church or in a Christian ministry, uh, a lot of uh, the manpower is really volunteers. And uh, as we said last week, uh, even in uh, APC, if you just look at you know the numbers, uh, comparatively, uh, staff, we may have about 25, Consultants, we may have in you know, about 30. Uh, we do have uh, our missionaries or outreach pastors as well. But then when you look at the volunteers here in Bangalore, uh, that number is between 300 and 350. Uh, this was, you know, of course, before the pandemic. So it's almost, you know, 10 times more than the staff and the consultants and all that. So we have to you know, pay a lot of attention to volunteers. So this week, we're going to talk about volunteer management. Um, I put out the notes for today's class, and I will uh, share the notes for Friday's class as well on before the Friday class. So I'm going to just uh, share the PDF, and we can look at it together and uh, go through this. Right. So today, uh, this week, we want to talk about volunteer management. How do we take care of the volunteers, right? Now, just the biblical background to this, uh, Romans chapter 12, verses four through eight, tells us that to everyone, God has given grace. Uh, okay, maybe let's just read these verses quickly. Uh, could somebody read Romans 12, four through eight for us? Then somebody else will read Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, and somebody could read 1 Peter 4, 10, and 11. Please. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have same functions, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the other. We have different gifts according to the grace given to given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in, in accordance with your faith. If it is 
serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it's if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is uh, giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Mm. So, you know, the passage is highlighting the fact that in the body, there are different members and we all have different gifts. And uh, each one is to encourage, to use or express whatever the gifts. And obviously this is not a complete list of gifts and, uh, and uh, functions in the body. It's just representative. So like this, there could be so many other different gifts that God has placed among the people and they need to be encouraged to use it. Let's please also read Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Somebody could read that for us. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm. So notice that uh, what I want to highlight here is that, you know, these verse 11, the the role of the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists is to equip the saints. That means equip the believers. Equip them means make them ready, make them, you know, give them all the training they need for the work of the ministry. So really it's the saints, that is believers, are to be involved in ministry work. Right? And uh, that will result in the edifying of the body, the growth of the body. So the local church, which is, you know, where believers, saints gather together, uh, should give opportunity for uh, uh, saints to be involved in ministry work. So that's a very important part. So, so now all of these saints or many of them would be volunteers. And so we need to give them the opportunity so that uh, the equipping they receive gives them, uh, should be, you know, put into action. They should have the opportunity to do that. First Peter chapter four, verse 10 and 11. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Mm. So once again, thank you. Once again, these verses are encouraging the expression of God-given gifts, as each one has received. That means uh, in the church, in the body, there are so many people. Everyone's got something from God. And they should minister it, they should use it to serve people and be good stewards of the grace of God that has been given to them. And so then verse 11, he says, you know, if you're going to speak or whatever you're going to do, do it uh, according to the ability God has given you and do it to glorify God. So uh, the point I want to just get across uh, from these verses is, look, there are so many people, God's people, God has given them all different gifts. Uh, it is our responsibility to give them the opportunity. I mean, to, first of all, to equip them, to encourage them, equip them, show them how to express gifts, but also to give them the opportunity to use those gifts. And God wants that, right? So that's where this whole volunteer management comes in because uh, when when we talk about volunteers, really what we are doing is we are we are fulfilling these scriptures. You know, we are equipping them according to the gifts God has given to them. We are encouraging them, and we are giving them the opportunity so that they can use those gifts to serve one another, and re which will ultimately result in the growth of the body. Right. So I want, to, I want us to think about volunteer management and, uh, and uh, this is a very important, very important part of the life of the church. So 
you know, generally when we say volunteers, we're talking about people who are giving, offering their time, their skills, their energy, their resources. Uh, it's out of the generosity of their own heart, out of the willingness to serve Jesus in the context of uh, the local church or the Christian ministry, right? And they want to be a part of the vision of the organization. So that's how we define these volunteers. They're, they're voluntarily giving uh, out of their kindness, time, their time, energy, and skills. Now, uh, uh, it is very important for us to understand that these volunteers are the life of the organization, right? We must look at them like that. They are the life of the organization. Why? Because, you know, like we said, staff, it's only about, 30 people, but uh, uh, with the help of the volunteers, a lot more can be done. You know, it, it's like a tenfold increase in upper manpower. So they are like the life of the organization and uh, they can help us uh, do a lot of things. But we need to think through very carefully uh, certain things. You know, now, so it could be from a local church perspective or if somebody's running a Christian organization from that organization perspective. Oh, we need to, how do we invite and engage volunteers, right? How do we, basically, how do we recruit them? How do we enlist them? Uh, and uh, uh, so that they feel, yeah, uh, you know, uh, they feel engaged with the vision you know, and the organization. Otherwise, what will happen is, you know, congregation will come and they'll go. They'll come and they'll go. But actually, every person who's part of the congregation is a potential volunteer, is a potential uh, a person who can serve in some way in the church. Every person. And that's how we should look at them, you know. Uh, but we should think through how are we going to invite them, you know, get them to comfortable, you know, come out of just being a, a an attendee, a congregation member to engage somewhere based on their gifts, uh, be, engage in the church. So we think on that. Secondly, uh, we have to think on to what extent should we volunteer, you know, and uh, we will talk about this a little later. I'm just putting forward the questions, you know, because uh, volunteers cannot do everything, right? They, they, there, are, there are limitations. Uh, so we need to be very aware of the limitations. Because otherwise, if we expect too much from volunteers, we will be disappointed. Uh, so there is a limit and, and within that limit, we can engage them. And so we must understand you know, to what extent we can involve volunteers in the organization. And thirdly, how do we structure, and this is important, how do we structure the ministries, you know, the things that we're doing in order to engage or you know, involve volunteers? So traditionally, you know, okay, if this ministry area is, you know, requires full-time people, can we make some changes? Can we, you know, uh, rearrange things in such a way we're giving opportunities for volunteers to be involved? So that is another thinking we need to do because uh, uh, typically in every area of ministry, we can engage our volunteers. If we are willing to rearrange or restructure things a little bit, volunteers, and then they'll be more than happy to be involved. Right? Uh, the important part in this uh, thinking through on this is we need to involve our staff. Right? So involve the staff in deciding or determining how to engage the volunteers. Because ultimately, remember, uh, you, you know, the staff are going to be responsible and uh, uh, they're going to be, you know, responsible for those areas of ministries and all that. So volunteers are good, but ultimately the staff, because they give the staff are giving their all their time, they're focused on those things, on those areas of ministry. They're going to, you know, drive it. So the staff must be involved in deciding the, you know, this whole, uh, answering these three questions for various areas of ministry. Now, very quickly, some of this may be, uh, you know, quite obvious, but uh, what are the benefits, you know, of volunteer engagement? You know, how can a local church benefit or a Christian organization benefit uh, from in letting volunteers be involved? You know, a lot of several benefits, and I've just mentioned a few here, is that uh, people feel part of the ministry. You know, they feel like I'm not just a spectator, but I'm a contributor. You know, this is 
uh, you know, things are happening because I'm doing something and they feel very much a part of it. Um, then, uh, like we said, it's an opportunity for them to exercise and nurture their gifts, which is very important. It's a biblical mandate. Uh, we have to give them opportunity. Um, it's an also an opportunity for the church to function as a body. Right? So the body means every part is doing its share. They're not, uh, you know, this huge congregation is not just coming and sitting and going, but this is the life of the church when everybody is involved. Uh, it's also an opportunity to put into practice whatever they learn spiritually, you know, so they can hear sermons, they can keep on hearing sermons, but if they don't put it into practice, uh, it's going to be waste. So when we engage the volunteers in the church and the ministry, we're actually uh, enhancing their learning, their spiritual growth, uh, by giving them the opportunity to practice. And of course, some practical things is uh, it increases our workforce. So that means more, you know, we have more people to do the work and we can get things done. And uh, in, uh, there is no financial expense, you know, for those areas where volunteers are. So these are some practical benefits. But at the same time, uh, we must be aware. There are limitations of uh, volunteer engagement, right? That means uh, volunteers are available for restricted amounts of time, you know. So they may say, I can give you so many hours a week, or I can come from this time to this time, one day a week, or so many days in a month, you know. So they, they because they just, they're of their own will, free will, they're giving us that time. So that's a limitation. Secondly, uh, volunteers may also have higher priorities, more, you know, whether it's a workplace demand, work-related travel. So they may say, okay, I'll be there on a, Saturday, but if uh, if the workplace requires them that Saturday, then they will have to say yes to the workplace and they may have to, you know, uh, uh, they may not show up for the what they had uh, previously wanted to volunteer for. Similarly, there could be work-related travel, uh, sometimes there could be family responsibilities and so on. So that is there. It's a, it's a reality. Uh, we cannot uh, overwrite that. Thirdly, uh, sometimes volunteers may need to transition from corporate culture to church culture. That means, you know, in a corporate culture, uh, you know, example, example, somebody could be the, you know, managing director, somebody could be the vice president, but they come to church and they say, I want to volunteer and you may give them something very small, you know, in the corporate culture, they may be, the vice president of a division with 500 people. Uh, they come to church and he says, okay, here, here are five people. <laughs> Can you do something with them? Uh, you know, and, and so they need to make this transition. And, uh, and this has been very interesting to observe. Uh, I, I was really touched by one person. Uh, he, he was uh, the head of uh, information technology in a, in a global company, very famous financial institution. He was head of IT here in, in their India division. And, uh, you know, he, he, he started meeting with me, so I used to meet with him once a month. And then slowly, you know, he started getting involved in ch church. And I said, yeah, wherever you want to serve, you serve. And so Sundays, he used to come and sit and do the PowerPoint. I was like, whoa. You know, this person is head of IT uh, and, uh, you know, he is running, I mean, here, uh, this big financial institution and he's taking care of the IT uh, all of India. And he's just reporting to, you know, or rather he's interacting with globally with, you know, different regions, uh, taking care of the IT infrastructure. And here in church, he's coming and doing the PowerPoint for the uh, the songs and the sermon. You know, that was really very really touching to see, you know, that uh, he, he, had, he had so easily adapted to the church culture, meaning uh, he's not like, coming to the church and expecting some big uh, position. No, he's sitting and doing PowerPoint presentations so the congregation can sing and uh, uh, the sermon, they can watch the sermon slides, you know. But that is just a beautiful example.
And like that, you know, uh, at these at at APC, we see a lot of people. They're actually big shots outside. That means, you know, in the corporate world, they are huge. They they are big people. You know, they they're making huge amounts of money and they are running big organizations, whatever. But when they come to church uh, in a, in a congregation setting, uh, you know, simple things they are fine with doing. You know. Uh, sitting and just talking to people, being, being, you know, and they understand that church is a body uh, where everybody is walking on level ground and, uh, you know, and then you serve one another, help each other. But sometimes people find, don't make that transition. And then that's where the, it, it, it affects the volunteer, uh, it affects the church culture. Example would be if people want position in the church because they're used to position outside, you know, so in the corporate, you know, like I said, they may be vice president, they may be managing director, they could be a CEO, they could be some big person outside, right? Then they come into the church and they expect similar thing here. They want the pastor to appoint them as head of something or, you know, whatever. They come with that mindset. And I remember this happened in church. So, you know, once one father, he came, and one family came, and they had three sons, you know. Uh, I mean, the three grown-up sons. So I would say they must have been uh, in their uh, late 20s or something like that. I, I, I'm just, you know, I don't know the exact age, but I'm just, uh, from what I could tell, the three, so he, this family had three grown-up, young adult men so the father came uh, to me and he, he was just straight and I, I can again I, do, I can't quote the exact words he said uh, but he said you know I have these three boys here can you give them you know basically he was saying can you give them leadership positions in your church and uh, I was I was taken aback I said like you know he's walking into church I, I don't even know these people you know, they could be great people outside, uh, but to come in and, you know, uh, say like that straight away to the pastor, uh, sorry, for me, it's like red flags, you know. Um, and so my, my, I didn't, I have to be, of course, polite, but I had to let them know that, you know, you know, you can come and, you know, please stay in the church and get a feel. We used to tell people, you know, be in the church for three months and see if you like the church. And so, you know, we just let them be in the congregation, let them settle in and let them understand our culture that here we treat everybody equally. You know, uh, they could be very important people outside, but when you come here, you, you just treat treated as we treat everyone, you know. So they eventually disappeared, and uh, and I did not, you know, I did not give any kind of role or position to them. But so, so you have both um, both uh, sides to this. But uh, what I do want to say is that uh, you know, it's at APC, it's been an amazing thing to see people uh, adapt to church culture. You know, uh, it's just wonderful to see that and that they understand that you know in church, uh, you, you, everybody's equal. We all treated equally. Now, uh, uh, so just to, uh, sorry, I spent too much time on that point. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, one last limitation of volunteers, sometimes volunteers may overcome it and under, under deliver. You know, sometimes people can be very enthusiastic. Oh, I want to serve God. I, I'll do anything. And, and you know, they will, they will take overcome it, you know, uh, and then you find that they did, but they're not able to come it. They may, they may get involved in like so many different teams and, and then they overcome it themselves and then they struggle, you know, sometimes they get burnt out, sometimes they get upset. Uh, and that's when, so we need to prevent it. We had preemptively, you know, hey, no, no, you do one or two things and do it well, that's good. Don't overcome it, you know, and so on. So, that's something we have to be careful. This is especially from very enthusiastic volunteers. Uh, you know, we just need to calm them down and let them go slow. All right, so that's limitations we had to keep in mind. But, you know, uh, let's talk about uh, 
uh, the next thing. What one very important thing that at APC, what we have done is uh, we've tried to uh, engage volunteers in teams. So it's uh, everywhere, you know, we just call it teams, teams, teams. Now in, in, in traditional churches, maybe they call it as committees or uh, things like that, but we just call it teams. So, uh, so immediately people understand that, you know, this is a collaborative effort. Uh, you're going to be working with other people uh, and uh, you're going to be, uh, uh, of course, there will be a team, we'll have a team leader. So somebody who's going to be responsible for the team. So, you know, so we call them volunteer teams. And I think when you call them teams, immediately a lot of un understanding comes and those coming from corporate understand teams you know they understand the dynamics of teams and uh, the wisdom of teams and uh, the how teams work and so on uh, so um, uh, we, we we work as volunteer teams now so let's talk about those volunteer teams and setting them up and so on now some areas of ministry you cannot have volunteers you know so we have to be clear on that you know some are uh, uh, let's say uh, I would say a high risk, and some require either you know the the, the they really need dedicated staff, and uh, you you cannot give that to volunteers. For example, you know our website. Uh, back in the early days, uh, uh, and I'm going back to maybe uh, something like 2004 or something, you know. Uh, People said, you know, oh, let's put up a website. Or maybe, maybe before 2004, let's put up a, a website for APC, and we will volunteer and do it. You know, and uh, uh, I said, oh, okay, fine. And it never happened. You know, one whole year came and there was no, nothing happening. And then I realized, look, uh, uh, these are IT people. Uh, they are their intention is good. They want to do something for the church. Uh, their heart is good, but they don't have the time. They are already so busy uh, with what they are doing. That's when I realized, okay, this IT thing is not going to happen with volunteers. Website will not happen with volunteers. We need our own in-house IT team to do this. You know, so we started hiring people. Uh, we, you know, we started thinking, uh, to, you know, develop our website. Of course, in those days when I was running the company, people would, company people would give their time and uh, but eventually we hired our, the church hired their own IT staff building their own IT team and we don't need a huge IT team but just you know whatever you need like three or four people whatever you need uh, get them a, because this is something you cannot have volunteers they may be able to do a little piece here and a little piece there but you cannot dedicate you cannot have volunteers so like this there are certain parts of the church or organization that you have to have full-time staff. It cannot be volunteer driven. That has to be understood. But uh, when in their ministry areas where volunteers can engage, we have a clear understanding. Okay. Okay. This is what the volunteers can bring. And these are the limitations. It's very clear. Let us not expect beyond that. They won't be able to deliver. This is it. Right. So uh, when we are setting up teams, that understanding should be very clear. Otherwise, you know, there will be uh, failed expectations, then we will get upset and so on. So we establish reasonable expectations. Okay, this is what volunteers can do. This is what has to be taken care of by our staff. So we have a hybrid. So certain teams or most of the teams are a hybrid. That means we have both volunteers and staff because volunteers can do so much, the rest has to be handled by full-time dedicated people. Now, what uh, we have seen here at uh, APC, and this has, of course, happened over time. It didn't happen from day one, but slowly over time, uh, we have uh, uh, put in place uh, many different volunteer teams and uh, areas where volunteers can be engaged. Right, so in a uh, sorry in a sunday service so we have uh, five locations so these services are happening fi in five locations and every location uh, uh many of these volunteer teams can 
uh, can take place. Yeah? So we can have volunteer teams, it's things like greeters, a parking lot, uh, guides, uh, security assistance, uh, information desk. You know, need just two or three people there, registration desk or a welcome lounge, um, uh, a connect team, people who just greet and you know connect with newcomers and uh, book table people under book table ushers you know they're going out guiding people to their chairs they collect the offering things like that um, offer it to recounting a media presentation those are been doing the powerpoint slides and things like that or the stage decor on special occasions uh, people helping with the sound and the setup and live streaming and moderate online moderators uh, online prayer rooms uh, you know, doing the announcements. Of course, now announcements are video recorded, but in those videos, volunteers can do a little bit. They can contribute their voice or do the announcement. Uh, in the worship team, they can, we can have volunteers, children's search, a lot of volunteers. Uh, those who are under call by God, they can even help in the preaching of the word, uh, in the prayer time, uh, during the service or after the service. And then at random, there may be ad hoc teams, uh, that are used that may be needed for certain uh, occasions. So in all these areas, you know, we found having volunteers has been a very good thing, a good experience. And also this happens only on Sundays for most of these, it happens only on Sundays. So, you know, all we're saying is give two to three hours of your time and your skill, your energy, and uh, um, people are very comfortable with that. So uh, these teams are a good, you know, good thing to do. You know, in any any congregation can do this. Now, on the other side, in ministry areas, uh, a, a lot of these ministry teams are driven uh, by staff. That means uh, people are there who are responsible for it or oversee it, but volunteers are also involved. And so these are ministry areas. Yeah, so of course, like I already mentioned, worship team, of course, we do have a worship pastor and associate worship pastor, but then a lot of people, about, I think, maybe 62 or somewhere around 60 people are uh, volunteers, you know, uh, who are serving across our various locations, lead worship on Sundays. And uh, again, the, the, the demand is not too much, meaning if they do one Sunday a month or if they're available, maybe two Sundays a month, they are fine with that life groups serving in the youth ministry. We have a youth pastor, but then there are volunteers who help uh, Christian professionals, ministry, men's, women's ministry, prayer teams. Uh, we have volunteers doing member care calls, uh, volunteers who you know take part in these uh, uh, special events for performing arts, like with a dance or skit or drama and things like that. Uh, some volunteers do proofreading, publications, some are paid. Uh, we have you know, volunteers serving in our outreach to schools and colleges. Uh, they run campus groups, they do evangelism, they go on mission trips uh, in camps and conferences. They help with, you know, various things that need to be done and also in special projects. So in many of these ministry areas, volunteers are involved. So you can see that, you know, when you look at this full picture, that as a church, uh, we have, uh, you know, created opportunity you know, for people to be involved. Uh, and uh, in many cases, it's a hybrid. That means we have a staff who's overseeing that work, but volunteers are able to engage, right? And so like this, even Christian organizations, so they can identify where are the spaces where volunteers can be involved and uh, you can engage them. But now, organizationally speaking, and this is something we have... Uh, uh, addressed earlier, but organizationally speaking, how can you restructure the organization or uh, uh, design your organization so that volunteers can be involved? You know, so that's very important. Now, as a church, this is what we have found very useful, uh, where uh, you know we have a core team of pastors and ministry leaders. Uh, so they they're like the hub. They you know ministry starts there. They have the vision and direction for various ministries. Uh, then we also have church staff. We have full-time people working in different areas and different ministries, whether IT, media, and a lot of other areas. And then we have this red band of volunteers. So we have lots of people who are ready to be volunteers. But how do we engage them? Well, 
uh, we use the hub and spoke model. That means any ministry area, that is this yellow thing, any ministry area, we have a combination. We bring in people who are, so this, this represents the team. So we have a team, but the team is a combination of either it could be pastors, it could be church staff, it could be volunteers. So we can create any number of these ministry areas. You know, if we think of it, we need, to, we need to get it done, we can get it done. So any number of ministry areas. And then we create a hybrid team uh, with the mix of uh, pastors, church staff, volunteers, and depending, you know, pastors may or may not need to be involved. Uh, sometimes it could just be as church staff and volunteers handling it. And uh, they, they are able to work together. And it also permits people to be in multiple teams. So, you know, volunteers could be in two or three different teams. Uh, church staff can also be involved, you know, in multiple teams. So it's, I think this is a great model, uh, organizationally speaking, uh, to engage volunteers. And this works well for us as a church. Okay. Uh, I'll just cover a little bit more ground and then we'll have some time for questions and discussion. I'll, uh, I'll keep about 10 minutes uh, just to, you know, uh, share, listen to your thoughts and ideas. And I'm sure, uh, you know, you'll be able to add to this, right? So now let's get into the whole volunteer management aspect. Uh, the, all of this was kind of the introduction and, you know, okay, how do we uh, get started in volunteers? Of course, the first step is volunteer recruitment right and this is is the biggest challenge for many churches and organizations which is finding volunteers and putting them in the right place in the right roles right this is the biggest challenge uh, you know you may have a congregation wonderful that's this that's a great thing but how do you make your congregation into volunteers you know how do you get them off their seats and say come on you know uh, engage in what's happening in the life of the church. That's a very, very big challenge. So uh, here are some things that we've been able to do. And of course, these are things we have learned over time. It's not uh, something we knew on day one, but uh, over time we have learned. Uh, very important is we must welcome volunteer involvement. We need to let people know that everybody's welcome. So uh, that should be a very, you know, vocal expression that, hey, we want people to engage. We want people to volunteer. So we, we uh, you know, we, we, ex we make statements like every believer is a minister or uh, we have, uh, you know, we, we let people know you're welcome to volunteer in the church and in various areas. So that's the first thing. People should recognize that, hey, this church, or this organization is open for volunteers. They welcome volunteers. They uh, they are happy to have people volunteer, come alongside uh, the staff. So we must, you know, create that mindset. Let people know you're welcome to volunteer, right? And we, of course, in order to do that, we have to provide opportunities. So make sure you look for opportunities. So this is intentional. It's not going to happen by accident. You have to intentionally create those opportunities for people wherever possible and get them involved, right? Then, of course, the next thing is to make these opportunities known to people, right? Uh, there are many ways to do this. Uh, you know, we could make announcements on Sundays. Uh, we could have website sign up, which we do. Uh, we have special, you know, volunteer drives on Sundays. Um, we we haven't done this for a while, but you know, from time to time, we show people who have volunteered, especially when they go on mission trips, they come back, they share their testimony, or a life group, uh, and they share their testimony. Uh, and we usually do this in uh, our, um, uh, it's called VIP banquet. When we welcome new people, we have, uh, in the banquet, we have one or two volunteers share their testimony of, hey, uh, this is how I got involved in church. So right there at that VIP banquet, which is for, for, for visitors, they keep hearing that it's a great thing to volunteer. And we also give them, you know, all the area volunteer sign up sheet and so on. Right. So that's one way, you know, those are different ways that we have done it. But I think the most effective way is personal contact. 
you know, uh, you know it, what what we have observed is, you know, we can make as many announcements as we want. You know, we can have video announcements. We can have exciting video announcements. We can uh, we can do all kinds. We can send an SMS or a WhatsApp or an email and all that. People will be very quiet. They don't move a little finger. But you you call them personally and say, hey, can you help with this? They'll be saying, it's like almost like they're saying, I'm waiting, I've been waiting for you to ask. And, and you know, here we are thinking that they will respond to our announcements, they will respond to our emails or something. People, for whatever reason, at least in, 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 in our congregation, this has been my experience, uh, they'll be staying, sitting quiet. Uh, there are a few who will, you know, get up and say, I want to, but most people just sit quietly and they're waiting to be asked. So uh, uh, just in my personal experience, you know, I, uh, I found that, you know, you just call somebody and say, hey, can you do this? They'll say more than, yes, happily, uh, more than willing, you know, they'll be ready to step in and help. So this has been the most effective way, I think, you know, and also among leaders, you know, so if you have a team leader and that, that leader goes and asks somebody, that's the quickest way, the easiest way to get volunteers. You know, he says, hey, can you help in this? People say, sure, and they'll sign up, you know. So let me pause here. I want to keep the last few minutes uh, for some discussion, sharing of ideas. Uh, we'll continue this on Friday. You know, uh, we're talking about uh, how to, you know, uh, recruit or engage, get enlist volunteers. Uh, we, we will continue from here uh, on Friday. But uh, let me pause and uh, let's have some time of interaction. Maybe you have questions or thoughts or ideas and uh, we can talk about it. Do you have a question or? Uh, Dave, are you saying something? I'm not sure we can hear you. No, Pastor, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I thought your voice uh, audio was on. Okay, so uh, any questions, any thoughts from anybody so far? I mean, I guess uh, things are pretty basic at this point. Everyone's okay? No, Pastor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, I think we'll... Uh, we will stop here uh, in talking at this point, you know, about enlisting volunteers. And there are there are strategies, you know. Uh, so uh, let me just say a few points on uh, on how we how we introduce this to new people. So when people come to church, we call them as first time visitors, and they come. Uh, then, as a visitors follow up, there's a call that goes from the church. And as a first step, we try to, I mean, first of all, we want to see if they're going to come back, they're interested in coming back. And if they are interested, we try to connect them to a life group, you know? So we, so there's a call that goes from the church and uh, would you like to join a life group so they can get connected with the community. So that's the initial thing. And we also tell them, please visit us for about three months so you get to know the church. So, you know, we encourage them to do that. Then, Every three months, we do what is called as a welcome a VIP banquet. It's basically a welcome banquet for the first time visitors, people who've come to church the previous three months, right? So we, we, we have, a, we know previous three months, these people have visited the church and they have been coming back. Now, some people may visit just one off or whatever, we don't disturb them, but those who have kept coming back, we invite them to the VIP banquet, which is basically a time after service. We request them to stay back. And there we, we just, uh, you know, uh, there's usually a little icebreaker that people play and then so that they get to know each other. Then we do a little presentation about the church. Uh, okay, this is the church. We have five locations. These are all the pastors. Um, this, you know, introduce them. This is our vision and a little bit, you know, not, not an overload, just short, uh, maybe a five minute, seven minute presentation. And then we also give them our volunteer sign-up sheet. So also we, we have two people, usually one or two people share, uh, volunteers share their experience. So the volunteers will share, you know, look, I was, I was just coming 
to church. I was sitting there and somebody told me to come and volunteer in you know, this area and they will share their experience, how it has been. So it kind of lets people know that, hey, you don't just have to come to church, but you can actually be part of what's happening. And then we give them the volunteer sign-up sheet. And uh, from there, you know, uh, uh, based on their interests and skills, uh, they they are uh, enlisted to serve in different areas. So basically what we have done is this volunteer enlistment, we have put it in a little formal way and within the first three months of people being at APC. So that's one way we do it. Another, the other way is, of course, we, you know, from time to time we announce, hey, if you want to volunteer, you know, go to the church website, there is a volunteer sign up sheet uh, form, you just sign up and then, you know, immediately the message goes to uh, our service coordinator and others, and then they can follow up and they reach out to these people. So that's also another way that anytime somebody can sign up for volunteer. Okay, so I'll stop here. Uh, we'll continue this on Friday and just deal with the other aspects of, uh, you know, managing volunteers, uh, handling them. And uh, I think the most important thing would be uh, managing expectations, creating the right, helping them understand the culture and uh, getting them involved in the teams. So we'll just talk about those practical things. Okay. All right. Let's wrap up. We'll uh, close in prayer. Thank you for being on the class. Uh, could one of us please uh, pray and then we will dismiss today. Anyone? Oh. Prince, Dave, want to pray? Father, we come before you. We thank you for this class, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are teaching us so many things, Lord God, how to organize a church, Lord Jesus, and how to well establish a local church, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for all this knowledge and all this teaching, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you have made us a part of your kingdom, Lord God. Father, we thank you for today's class as we um, close our class, Lord Jesus. Be with each one of us, Lord Jesus. And as we go about our business, help us to do everything according to your will and your purpose, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, God bless. See you again. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.